Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 761 and the topic today is do you have time for a relationship when you're a superhero? That's intended to be provocative and of course if you know me you know I'm a bit of a superhero fan for the Marvel type stuff not so much DCU but Marvel stuff which is why I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Spider-Man probably tomorrow. Anyway that's my social life. Before I jump into the topic and explain what I mean and also give some tips and clues some guidance, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do this stuff. My name is Barry Selby. I am a, I'm the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a powerful book that has principles for healthy relationships for singles and couples, men and women. Um, I'm also a relationship attraction expert and an inspirational speaker helping women create balance in love, life and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the fem divine fem excuse me, passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is what informs my work with women, and why I'm so passionate about supporting women, and why I'm also doing these talks every day now for over two years called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So today we're at episode number 761. Yeah, I've done a lot of these. And this idea of superhero thing showed up because one because I put, a, I put a meme out this morning, so just to be transparent, this afternoon. I posted a meme after I had a conversation, or I should say, I had a chat online with a friend of mine, that she was going through lots of stuff about how she's so busy and so crazy, there's no time for a relationship. And it is kind of a thing for women where they basically are almost like superheroes. And, and some men do this too, but it's mostly towards the women I'm talking about this. Where so many women are um, so busy getting life done, making things happen, succeeding, thriving, doing all the other things, especially for their single mothers, especially if they're entrepreneurs or CEOs or running companies, it can be very challenging to have a love life as well. Now, the superhero label, as a friend of mine pointed out to me um, kindly, is a challenge because some people feel like they need to measure up to some standard. Now, I don't mean it that way. What I mean, though, is that sometimes these women can be, I want to say judged, but praised perhaps as superheroes because they're doing such amazing stuff in their lives, yet internally they're feeling wounded, lost, and lonely. And in particular, I was talking to a friend, the, the friend I was talking with, I should say typing too because we're, we're on social media, um, this morning was the fact that she's like too busy to have a relationship. You know, she's raising, raising these kids, she's a big family, she's running two businesses. She's a very busy lady, so having a relationship is very challenging. So she's almost saying like, why bother? Why have the men even, you know, if the men pursue her or reach out just to say like, thanks, but no thanks. I understand that feeling, but I want to speak to, well, before I jump down there, let me go over here for a second. Totally separate, but come back to the same point is something I've learned recently in my exploration of human design. If you study human design, you may know about this is besides all different pieces about our strengths and our allegiances and other things too is some of us, in fact, I found, apparently a friend of mine recently gave me an update that the statistics are higher than this. I thought it was 25%, but it's nearer 40, 45% of the population of what is called single definition. There's single definition and there's split definition, and there's different levels of split definition. But what it means though, from what I've become aware of, is that people who are single definition, people, either gender, are people who actually don't need a relationship. Now, I'm one of those people in the single definition category, which was immediately a sigh of relief and a, and a sigh of concern. Because I sat in a place where I was going, that explains why I've been single a lot, because I haven't needed a relationship. But the sigh of concern was, but I want one. And that's what I want to speak to in this context for you in your areas of relationship, because maybe you're so busy, you haven't got time for one, but I strongly suspect you may still want one. So here's the thing, in the same framework, as um, making space for a relationship in, in the Feng Shui conversation, it takes about how it's good to make space for a relationship by making room in your closet, having room for another toothbrush in the bathroom, maybe having, having a bed that has two bedside tables, like set up the environment to entertain a relationship. Well, if you're a very busy person in your life with work and a relationship with uh, family dynamics and everything else, you may not have time in your life for a relationship unless you make some. So the thing is that I want to speak to is if you really don't have time for one, be honest with yourself. Is a relationship a priority for you? As I mentioned with the human design piece, the thing I discovered or rather confirmed in a way was that I don't need a relationship. 
which frees me up to actually enjoy the idea of having one when, when I'm ready to, which I'm looking towards having soon because my work's getting to a place where I want to partner with somebody on this. Now, for me, that, that's about having work and love be to go together in relationship. So if that's your um, what's what I'm looking for? definition in the human design framework, maybe a relationship isn't a priority. Now, it can be a desire, absolutely, and it can be worth having. It doesn't mean you can't have one. It's more about it's not needed for you to function. Now, some people are split definitions, to give you the other piece of the conversation, where when you have a split definition, it actually is more functional and you're more effective in the world when you have a relationship around you that is supportive of that. I don't necessarily mean romantic, by the way. It could be a family dynamic where the whole family is all split definitions and you come together in support. That's actually pushing the envelope a bit too far. Let me back up a second. As I said, less than half the population are single definition, which means half or more are split definition, which is the other side of that. And some people are split definition. If they're split as a single split versus triple split or other levels, means that when they find partnership with someone who really honors and supports them and meets where they are, both partners, if they are split definition, thrive and do amazing things together. They, in fact, they do better because they're together. Now, if you're somebody who's that definition in human design, and I'll put a link in the comments for the it's called the Jovian Archives, the website. We can do your own, um, um, put, your, put, your, put your birth date, location, other things in there as well. And it'll give you the information about that, including your chart and everything as well. It's a free resource, so you can check it out. If you are a split definition in this context, it can mean that when you're busy doing your own life as a superhero, getting things done, making things happen, and out there just conquering the world, that you may not be actually fully functioning yet even though you're doing such amazing things, that when you have that relationship, your level of success, of effectiveness, of joy, of freedom, of all these different things will actually um, not accelerate that much, it's just expand massively. So that can be useful. Now, if you're a single definition doing that, having a relationship, if it's not a, an additive to what you're doing, doesn't make any sense. Like being single and living your life the way you're living it, being successful, thriving, doing the things you love doing, and making a difference in the world, that you enjoy doing is only worth having a relationship if it adds to what you're already doing. I mean, I say it's true for everybody. Actually, it's true for everybody. Okay, let me, re let me rephrase that a different way. So again, if you have a split definition and you're in a relationship with somebody, as long as the person is additive to make things work more, more, um, more powerful, more effective, more thriving, then great stuff, then it's great to have a relationship. Again, if you're a split definition, you can have somebody work with you as a business relationship, not necessarily a romantic relationship, or it could be a consultant or a coach or a muse even. That would be the person that adds to your success, thriving, life, joy, celebration, because you have a split definition. If you're a single definition, again, you don't necessarily need that, although it's nice to have that. So thriving in your life, having success, being absolutely aligned to your mission, goal, and purpose is important. But again, single definitions don't need partnership. However, when you have two single definitions come together, I, th I believe, because I'm hoping for that myself, just to be totally transparent, will be so much more magnified and multiplied than just simply one plus one. It becomes five, ten, a thousand, because of the power of the two single definitions. Now, I'm not sure if that's true or not in human design, just what I'm feeling is I would like to think it's that way. So that's just my... This is Barry Silver's agenda. <laughs> so if you are in a single definition, or sorry, excuse me, if, you're, if your definition is single in the construct of human design and you're living your life succeeding in doing what you're doing, it's not worth having a relationship with somebody who's not that themselves. I mean, it's common sense in a way, but it's also spiritually making sense too, I trust. So my, my um, invitation to you, first of all, if you haven't done the human design, if you haven't, um, checked out the human design piece, I recommend doing that because it's a useful piece of information more so than just a straight horoscope because it does use, it does, it's, a bunch, it's an I Ching mixed with astrology, so it's a bunch of different things but it's really cool, so I recommend doing that anyway, but secondly if you're looking for relationships and you're doing it from the place of thinking you need one, especially if your human design type doesn't need one there's a conflict there so it's important to learn, first of all, actually, let me, this is actually tying into last week, because I did talk about it for the whole week last week about um, codependence, codependency, that relationships with a lot of people are a place they go to to feel complete, feel whole. Now, as I said, with the split definition, 
that's really yes and no because the split definition is yearning for that partnership that helps them th fly and thrive and succeed but it's not codependent it's additive this is the true definition from my in my language of interdependency where you're both whole beings that add to each other that again create a make a multiplication a magnitude of increase of your success both of your success and thriving and loving the world that's the same as single definition that works both ways the thing about it is that with people of single definitions I mentioned more than once so far in this talk the need for relationship is less critical it's just additive as well so either way to come back to the whole point of it being superhero is hang on let me back that up a second let me put that aside for a moment okay the, the superhero mindset the single superhero um, addiction let's talk about this one for a second as I said I'm a, I'm a massive Marvel and superhero fan I love the movies but I have no no illusion or delusion that I'm one of them in the sense of having special powers that let me leap off tall buildings or fly or do other things I may have superhero skills in terms of being able to connect to the heart I'll claim that but not like they are in the movies I don't wear spandex or any strange costumes <laughs> just some dress shirts on camera but my point, <laughs> my point is though that some people feel like they have to work so hard and set such high standards that a superhero level of effort that they never achieve, and it's not healthy. The superhero culture is comic book fiction. So let me put that into context for a second. That if you're comparing yourself against people who are doing amazing things in the world because they have all the right things in the right place all lined up, that's not healthy either being honest with yourself being reasonable with yourself yes stretching into new goals new visions new intentions is great but if you're working so hard you're not living life if you're working so hard you're not joy enjoying life you're missing something and relationship may not be it when you're missing something it's you're missing yourself yes relationship with yourself which I've always I've talked about a lot lately is becoming my main focus is the priority having a healthy relationship with yourself is where everything starts from and where everything thrives from and so if you're busy out there doing stuff externally make things happen and yeah if you're raising a family and you're doing some things in the business where you take care of your clients and everything else but you're getting drained by it it's time to come home to yourself uh -huh. that's the name of my course yeah okay I did plug that into it accidentally that time but when you come back to yourself when you come home to yourself that's where your resource place is and superhero or not everybody is a healthier person when they connect to who they are and as I said superheroes are f a fiction they're comic book um, fodder so being a real hero in your life which means I believe living your life to its best possibility honoring owning and respecting yourself being a model for other people to follow by living in integrity honesty and authenticity that for me is what a superhero would really be or a hero period um, Sorry, a distraction. I thought something else that doesn't belong in here. Okay, just to finish up, to wrap this up in a night in a in a bow. Um, my come home to yourself course is part of the conversation. I'll put the link in the comments and check it out. Um, and my book, as I mentioned that earlier too. But my point is really simple about this: is that when you're really caught up in the world, being a productive citizen of the world, so to speak, please don't do that at the cost of your own self-support. Even raising a family, even doing things for your clients. As the analogy, uh, the analogy using the one from the, air, the um, airplane safety protocol is, you put your own uh, oxygen mask on first before you put your child's on or somebody who's less capable. The same thing is true in business. Until you take care of yourself, it's hard to take care of your clients. The same with your family. If you're not taking care of yourself, you're sacrificing yourself for other people. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, they fixed it. Yeah, don't do that. But if you need help in this area, I am passionate about helping people love themselves and honor themselves for relationship but also for life as well so I'll put the link in the comments also for a discovery session with me if you want to talk because I believe you can have what you want the right way which is loving yourself first life can be a lot of work when you make it that way but life can also be very joyful and joy filled when you do it from the place of filling up first and expressing from your overflow and learning how to be interdependent in all your relationships that's really the fundamental shift that more people are making because this culture we we've been we've been raised in that I talked about a lot last week was about the codependent paradigm 
we, we've been trained to think codependency is the way, and I disagree vehemently, or vehemently, vehemently, that was too many syllables. So learning how to really love yourself and be self-supportive is the way through this to become the hero of your own life and have the relationship with yourself you need and desire and have a relationship with anybody else you want to have from that overflow. I think it made sense. That bottom line is the way that life really works effectively and where you can have what you want in your life the way it works truly as well. I think I made my point. I appreciate you being with me as always. Thank you for being here, of course. Um, this is part of my ongoing series of talks about love and relationships, but about life as well and about loving yourself, supporting yourself to have what you want in all areas of your life. So I hope this has been of use to you and been of value. If you have any questions, thoughts, please put them below. I'll respond when I sign off. I will put the links in the comments I mentioned, the three that I said. Um, and if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time uh, on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. If you're not already watching me here, then you can watch the replays on my business page on Facebook, which you can like if you wish, which is barryselby.author. And also, if you're watching me on YouTube, you can watch them there on my playlist, which is Messages from the Masculine, on my channel, which is Barry Selby. Please like my channel. Please subscribe to my channel as well. So with that, I thank you for watching, as always. I appreciate your input, your feedback, and your, and your views and likes on the broadcast. And if you have any questions, thoughts, reach out to me for help. That's what I'm here for. And again, I will put a link in the comments for how you can reach out for more support. So with that, thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.